Tarantula is a 1955 American sci-fi horror film, directed by Jack Arnold, and plays on the theory that radiation has the ability to cause living things to increase in size and strength, a popular premise for a lot of 50s movies. Our story begins with a deformed man in his PJs, stumbling through the Arizona desert. He collapses to the ground and dies as vultures circle above him. Next, a doctor called Matt Hastings is asked to examine the body by the rather perplexed sheriff. Neither of them have ever seen a deformity like this before, but despite the dead man's mangled features, the sheriff is certain the body belongs to a biological research scientist called Eric Jacobs. They get a second opinion from Dr. Dima, who was Jacobs' colleague and oldest friend, who confirms that it is indeed Jacobs, and his cause of death was a condition known as acromegaly, which has similar symptoms to gigantism. However, Hastings isn't convinced. Acromegaly usually takes years to take full effect, and sources say old Jacobs was fit as a fiddle, just four days previously. Dima shrugs off Hastings' doubts, and basically says shit happens buddy, what you gonna do? Later, we see Dima's lab, and the oddities he has created. He's got a massive mouse, a gigantic guinea pig, and a tarantula the size of a golden retriever. Dima has been injecting these poor creatures with some kind of radioactive nutrient, which forces them to grow exponentially over short periods of time, but it's okay, it's for the good of humanity. Where have we heard that one before? Suddenly, he is attacked by a bloke with a face only a mother could love, and whilst they chuck stuff around, and generally trash the gaff, his super-sized tarantula makes a break for it. After their tussle, Dima is injected with the same nutrient used on his colossal pets, and the violent assailant does a die on the floor. Dima awakes in his burning laboratory, and instead of reporting the misshapen monstrosity that attacked him, decides to bury him in the desert. Proper sketchy if you ask me. Hastings gives a lift to a woman called Steve, that's right, her name is Steve, and she tells him she is Dima's new lab assistant. She also speaks of another lab assistant named Paul Lund, but Dima says he buggered off ages ago. As far as Dima is concerned, all of his test animals perished in the fire, but when skeletons and demolished cars start turning up around the county, Hastings and his reporter accomplice Joe Birch get suspicious and try to investigate. They're pretty stumped by the whole affair, and the pools of white liquid found near the carcasses only ramp up their bewilderment. That is until Dima, now in a deteriorating state due to his injection, confesses that Lund suffered a similar fate to Jacobs, and the nutrient, that rapidly boosts the size and strength of animals, is in fact fatal to humans. Armed with this information, it's only a matter of time before Hastings works out that the tarantula is loose, and this creepy crawly may need more than a bonk from a rolled up newspaper to stop it in its tracks. So there we have it. A charming doctor intent on finding out exactly what is causing mayhem in his sleepy Arizonan town. An ambitious scientist, who probably went a bit too far on the whole saving the world routine. And a spider the size of a multi-story Primark, who is insusceptible to gunfire, and even dynamite. Just look at the size of that big hairy bastard. Will the sheriff and the police be able to stop the enormous arachnid before it reaches the town? Will these delicious horses turn into hors d'oeuvres? And why the hell is Hastings tasting this unidentified desert custard? What an absolute mad lad. Tarantula is an entertaining, and often nerve-shredding, example of perfect 1950s monster movie fun. As the plot builds, and we see the characters become increasingly confused by the mysterious fatalities in the desert, the tarantula grows in size, along with the fear factor. I have always felt uneasy around larger spiders, I'm no scaredy cat, but I've never enjoyed discovering one of the web-slinging wankers in my house, so naturally, this film did a good job of giving me the heebie-jeebies. The acting is fine in this movie, there really isn't anything to complain about in that department, and the fact that Clint Eastwood appears uncredited as one of the pilots near the end is a fun bit of movie trivia, that I'm sure I'll forget by the time I review the next video. 
The special effects did a great job at showcasing the tarantula, and it is easy to forgive a few moments of dodgy green screen overlapping. After all, this was made in the mid-50s. One of the scenes that really left an impact on me was when the tarantula attacked the house containing Dima and Steve. It starts by perving on Steve as she gets ready for bed, then proceeds to smash the place to bits, in an attempt to get its fangs into the petrified canapes inside. All the commotion wakes up Dima, who has a face like a melted welly, and Steve watches as the sinful scientist gets what he deserves. Hastings arrives just in time to do his knight in shining armor shtick, and the house is completely knackered by the eight-legged wrecking ball. Tarantula is very effective at getting under your skin, and is definitely worth watching, especially if you have an indisposition towards many-legged beasts. The real horror of this movie lies in the tarantula's relentless nature. It's faster than us, bigger than us, and stops at nothing to get what it wants. And that's what makes it so fantastically terrifying. So what did you think of this slice of 50s monster insanity? Let me know in the comments below, and if you liked this video, why not tap that little thumb icon to let me know. It really is appreciated. I've been HB, the horror bot, and I'll see you next time for another spooky review. Until then, take care, always check your slippers for spiders before you put them on, and always resist the temptation to open up your own lab with the intention of ending world hunger only to accidentally create a formula that turns normal-sized lab animals into bloody massive man-eating behemoths that go on bloodthirsty rampages. Cheers babes!